Monica Argatzinger, and I'm the co-pastor of the Denver Community of Christ. I'd like to welcome you here on this Easter morning. We're going to start this morning with a call to worship, which is going to be a responsive reading. That may seem like it won't work online, but I think we can make this happen. I'm going to read a line, and then I'm going to give you a signal like this. And when I do, I want you to shout a word of joy. It could be hooray, yay, awesome, hallelujah, any words you want. So this way you'll get to participate in our, in our uh, responsive reading call to worship. So let's begin. Today is Easter. Jesus Christ has risen. The tomb is empty. Jesus Christ has risen. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. He is risen. Christ is alive. Share the good news. It's Easter. Christ is alive and comes to bring good news to this and every age, till earth and sky and ocean ring with joy, with justice, love, and praise. Our invocation today was written by Caleb and Tiffany Bryan. Resurrected God, would we recognize you? Would we understand the incredible power you have over death? Grant us the peace that was present in the garden in those moments before your resurrection. And may we spread that peace as the woman who first saw you alive spread the news of your resurrection. Help us to recognize opportunities for peace that once seemed extinguished, now as new soil for growing peace. Clear away our doubts that peace may not come and show us how to create peace across the world. Amen. Good morning. Happy Easter. Our scripture today is Matthew 28, 1 through 10. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The women arose early in the morning and ran to the tomb. We treasure this story of that first Easter, and like them, we rise early to come to church to celebrate what they found, the empty tomb but not so fast today. I am speaking to you through a recorded message. I have gone to the kitchen to fix a cup of coffee for myself and get ready not to worship with you in person, not to share a traditional Easter breakfast, an egg hunt for the children, and an 11 o'clock worship service at 480 Marion Street. Our physical setting for worship at 480 Marion Street is empty. We are sheltering in place, isolating ourselves to defeat a virus going through our nation and our world with the visions. But as the two women found an empty tomb, we can proclaim with the angel, He has risen. Up from the grave he rose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. Can you hear the melody going through your mind when you say these words? 
This year, we will experience Easter in a solitary manner or with a small part of your family. But the truth remains, regardless of where we are, we worship the resurrected Christ. And the instructions given to the women by the angel and reinforced by Jesus himself, not to be afraid, go quickly into Galilee and you will see him. He is going before us and will meet us there. And they hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. Within our circumstances as they are, we must think of opportunities we have to do what he is asking. We can't wait for the time when we meet in that physical setting at 480 Marion Street. And today, what might that be? All over the world, people are praying. Join those folk. On our walks in our neighborhood, we are meeting families whom we may never have met or visited with. Stop and chat. Get to know them. People in our congregation whom we haven't seen for a month. Check on them. Our family members, be they living close or far, Call, write, text, email. But above all, take care of yourself. Journal, read, study, meditate. Create a community where you are, where we are. Promote a community of hope, love, joy, peace, and you. We will be with the master in Galilee. Now comes the time for our disciples' generous response. God sent Jesus to bring reconciliation and hope into the world. We have an opportunity to give generously, to continue to bring hope to others. During the disciples' generous response, we focus on aligning our purposes with God's purposes, aligning our heart with God's heart. As you share your mission tithes, or if you give regularly through e-tithing, use this time to express gratitude for God's many gifts in your life and to reflect on how we respond faithfully to those blessings. When we understand God's love and grace are given freely to us, we respond out of gratitude and are liberated to share freely in return. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we come before you, Lord, so thankful for the blessings that we are receiving. I ask, Lord, at this time that you bless those monies that are given, that they may be used to bring peace into your world. I ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sending forth today is from Doctrine and Covenants, section 165. Beloved community of Christ, do not speak and sing of Zion. Live, love, and share as Zion. Those who strive to be visibly one in Christ, among whom there are no poor or oppressed. As Christ's body lovingly and patiently bear the weight of criticism from those who hesitate to respond to the divine vision of human worth and equality in Christ. This burden and blessing is yours for divine purposes. And always remember the way of suffering love that leads to the cross also leads to resurrection and everlasting life in Christ's eternal community of oneness and peace. Trust in this promise. Go in peace. Amen.